Here is the first of our Design and Technology Revision lectures. Uh, this will be revision for Year 12, but also for the upcoming Year 12, uh, a good resource for understanding the content. One of the first aspects to the course is understanding factors affecting designing and producing. These are all broken down into appropriateness of the design solution, how needs affect a design and the production, the function of the design, the aesthetics, the finance, the ergonomics, work health and safety on the user and the people producing it, the quality of the final design, the short-term and long-term environmental consequences, whether the design has inbuilt obsolescence and going through a life cycle analysis how it affects the environment long term. The first thing we need to understand is how appropriate a design is. Now from confusing to the inappropriate, designs may not meet the user's ethical, financial, personal, cultural expectations or skills. When we're considering users, they're all going to have different understandings of what they can do with the design or how to use a design and also a community expectation of what a design should have. So when looking at the merry-go-round, we have something that doesn't really look like children would be too attracted to it, and if not, it might be the thing of nightmares for a number of children who get onto it. Uh, the rubbish couch, I'm not sure that a lot of people would actually be comfortable sitting on the couch, and when you think about the aesthetic and the way that that may look in someone's house, it would just make it look messier, because it is literal mess inside it. When we look at the lift buttons, quite often we understand the idea of the function of a button for the lift, but my question would be, which one is up and which one is down? If we just swapped one arrow with one button, we have a far better solution straight away. So it's really important to understand that the appropriateness of the design is one thing that needs to be considered. And we've got a quote there, design works best when it gets out of the user's way. Now, the checklist that you need to understand here is that accessibility to the design might be the required skills of the user. When we start considering uh, apps on phones and computers, or even websites, they may inhibit a number of users from accessing them. So you look at a lot of older people who have not been grown up with the internet and have not used computer technology a lot. If they are placed in front of a computer and are required to access, say, net banking, it's very difficult for them because they don't have the skills and experience in using uh, websites. There's also the consideration of cost to the user. Quite often you can have products that are high quality in terms of the production and the materials used, but of course that ends up being far more costly to the user in the end. Now this can be quite important, especially if it's something that's life-saving and um, beneficial to society. So if we outcost people from accessing it, then it's a little unfair there. Age appropriateness, if we go back to that uh, merry-go-round, you can see that's not quite age appropriate. There's also the cultural, ethical or gender sensitivity. So we could group that with three of those categories, but you can consider a whole lot of other things as well, such as people with special needs. Does the design exclude a group due to cultural, ethical or even gender differences is the question here. But I'd also ask, does it exclude people due to whether uh, limitations on sight or hearing impairment, other features like that that people may experience. So we have to consider how our user is going to access the design. Can they still access it is the question. Now I've got a few questions here for you to answer. You need to develop points that identify the issues, and that means positive and negative with developing a much needed medical tool that is expensive to use and access. So that means that getting the medical tool, say into a hospital, will cost, and of course may cost the patient to be able to access it. I also want you to develop points that identify the issues, both positive and negative, with developing a design using cheap resources. So what if we 
create a cheap medical product that's quite easy to access. What are the issues with that? Now, of the three designs shown in the previous slide, which design is the least appropriate? Why? You need to answer these questions. And if you're in the Year 10 Design and Technology preliminary course, you'll be asked to do a debate on the issue of cost to consumers and the appropriateness of design. So these are springboards to be able to do that. Needs. Is there a need? Quite often designers, especially computer programmers, uh, create for a perceived need or just for themselves. Whenever they think they've found a need out there, quite often they don't understand the user in that process. It might also not be an actual need. So we have here this little thumb spread to hold books open. Some people might find that useful, some people might find it unnecessary. We have a waterfall shower, which I'm not sure there's an actual need for that really, other than maybe just to show off. And our template for cutting pizza slices with scissors. So you can see that the template's attached to the scissors and you can cut a pizza portion perfectly. Is there a real need for that, would be the question. So the questions for needs is to define a real need and a perceived need. What do they mean? Is fashion design a real or perceived need? When you answer that question, you also have to answer why. How does fashion design measure success? What is it, its purpose ultimately? And how has technology become a perceived need and a real need? So when I'm saying that, I'm asking technology itself has now become a design product, a product that is sold based on the fact that it is a new technology. So I'm suggesting there to consider the tablet and the smartphone. For year 10, answer these questions in your workbook and provide one other example of a design that meets a perceived or manufactured resulting from height or the media exposure, need. You'll need to discuss this design in class. You'll see on Edmodo when these are due.